Hello, thanks for joining us. Election night was a big night for incumbents, a bigger night for Democrats who picked up key seats in the assembly. Only a handful, but enough to shift the balance of power in Trenton to look at what it means for a state hobbled by high property taxes, crumbling roads and heavy debt, and even what it means for the governor's presidential bid and those vying to replace him. Michael Hill, chief political correspondent Michael Aaron and I are joined by Assembly Speaker Vincent Prieto and Assembly Republican Leader John Bramnick. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having Let's here. start with the shocker in District 11. You picked up two seats from Republicans. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was a shocker. Uh, uh, that earlier in that day, I had told Michael I was going to end my night in District 11. I was confident we were going to pick up uh, those seats. We had two exceptional candidates that had been working throughout you know, all year there knocking on doors where people had not been before. They had said people had not seen them. So I was not surprised. I thought that we would pick up those seats. And I actually made a little bit of prediction of other districts, like, like 16, that we were in the hunt. And uh, it came to fruition. We actually picked up, uh, at this point, it looks like four seats to an unprecedented majority that we haven't seen since 1979. Right, first in 36 years. Even late into the night, it was, it was still close, but you had two prominent Republican women, uh, and Caroline uh, Casagrande gave a concession speech, a speech to thank her supporters that even before the race was called, sounded like a concession speech. The Republican Party in New Jersey is the party of the people. We're the party of that senior citizen who doesn't have that $1,200. We are not the party of the special interests. That's why we get buried in cash because those regular people are out and they're fighting with us and they know they can't pay higher taxes in this state. And so what a pleasure it has been to work for those people and to serve those people. And I Let's go to uh, Republican leader John Bramnick. What do you think about that? Was money the problem? Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, those are two terrific candidates, uh, two terrific assembly women. Now, there was uh, incredible amount of special interest money, and I understand that because Caroline and Mary Pat both were in favor of reforms, making it cheaper to live in New Jersey, lowering taxes, and there, there are interests in this state who don't like that. Uh, first, let me congratulate the speaker. You picked up some seats, no question about it, and I look forward to working with the speaker in, in a bipartisan way. Uh, but there's no question money played a role. And also keep in mind, District 11 is, has a lot more Democrats than Republicans. So it's not a shocker, uh, but it is unfortunate because I think these are two terrific women. You say it has a, you say it has a lot more uh, Democrats than Republicans, but you have to go back 20 years into the 90s to remember a time when it was ever represented in the assembly by Democrats. Dan Jacobson was one of the two at the time. Sure. They lasted two years, and then the district switched to its natural Republican uh, state, and now for the first time in 20 years, it's going back to the Democrats. Sure, Michael, but you're also aware that a midterm election, when you have a second term governor, is where the legislative, uh, who's the legislature normally loses seats. So you had a combination of incredible amount of money, uh, special interests were very upset about the Republican reform agenda. I get that. We lost, uh, I, I get that in District 11, but our message is not going to change with respect to, hey, we need to affect property taxes in this state, and we need to make it more affordable. But, but, sure. but, but John, you, you can't have it both ways. You said that money was spent. Money was spent in the second district from, from outside interests or whatever. Brown still won in the 16th district. That was in the case. We are up on one seat there to pick up a seat, and we were knocking on the door on the second seat. So you can't do that because that money was not there, and that was almost done with duct tape and crazy glue. So I got to tell what? you, the voters came out, and you have districts like uh, Michael Patrick Carroll won by 2,000 votes in his district. So you look at the landscape. People like what Democrats are doing. We're representing the middle class that has been crushed under this administration, John. And that's where this what this is all about. It's a referendum on who's going to do the right thing for the residents of the state of New Jersey. Well, these are very district-specific races. But look, uh, I still accept the fact that you picked up some seats. But uh, still, they've never really defended how the state got so expensive over the 13 years where the Democrats have controlled the legislature. The bottom line is we need to make serious reforms. The question's going to be, 
Will the Democratic leadership accept the kind of reforms that we need with changing the school funding formula, with cha saving the pensions <laughs> by, by making certain changes? But look, that's going to be John, a debate down that, the road. Of course, that's I, a yeah, debate. Sure. The funding formula, of course. if you fully fund it, your district mm -hmm. would actually benefit. All those underfunded districts would benefit. Sure. And I got to tell you, you talk about during the 13 years that we've been in power, I can go back to 1997 when $2.8 billion were borrowed. We're still paying for that till 2029. In 2020, it'll be $507 million a year well, all the way. So we, guess what? We, that was the important thing is. The bill just rung. Go to your corners. Are we, seeing, sure. are we seeing the way you guys are going to work together to actually solve the problems well, I, I, of the I, state? I, I, I got to tell you. We're I, talking about substance. We, we are talking about substance. Yeah. And I got to tell you, from when I became the speaker, John will tell you, I am somebody that's always willing to compromise. When we had talked about the estate tax, John mm -hmm. came about it, yeah. I was talking with the governor about that last year. Because you need to negotiate to get things done. I am aware that the executive branch is held by the Republicans. The, John has said to me, well, you have 41. You could pass a bill. But I don't, I don't want to pass a bill that is not going to go anywhere. So of course I'm going to work with them. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to be realistic and talk the truth and not talk about blaming us for the last 13. Absolutely not. This was a marathon for many administrations. And we you inherited know, look, this. One, one it, of the things that, that, that probably influenced some of the outcome is no doubt money. And we're going to hear now from someone, the teachers, who contributed a lot of money to uh, to the effort here, and uh, Wendell Steinhauer with the but, 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 NJEA. But, but, let's listen to him real quickly. We'll come back. How influential was the NJEA in this election? Well, we like to think that we uh, had a uh, force in it tonight. Uh, three Democrats uh, pick up seats in the majority. Uh, and, you know, a lot of our members were concerned about the budget vote back in June. And, um, you know, if, if re the Republicans... Uh, didn't want to stand behind us in this pension fight, and that was a true litmus test for us. So we put our support behind the people that will support us. So there you hear from Wendell Steinhauer, NJEA, and this is this is the reality. I mean, you're talking about Citizens United decision by the Supreme Court, people spending a lot of money. Yeah. This is the reality. You win yeah. by the rules, you lose by the rules. Well, and that's the rules we're playing by. And we're playing, we're playing by those rules right now. And listen, the NJEA can put their support where they want, and as long as they're playing by the rules. But like I said, it's not, it, you can't talk about that when in the 16th district, that money was not poured well, into that district, but, and we actually picked up a seat there. Versus 16th district there's no doubt there was outside money and, and the republicans are outspent but let's talk about the real issue real. The njea took millions of dollars put it in district one never talked about education never talked about why they were there in terms of pension reform they attacked sam fiocchi relentlessly on personal issues so my point is this i don't have a problem with outside money but i need the people in the media to point out yeah. why the money's there and why is the money there we have proposals, and we have a bipartisan commission that says, in order to save the pension, we have to make some changes. NJEA doesn't like that. Yep. They came out with an incredible amount of money to but stop yeah. that kind of pension form. Let me John, just, let me but, just, but just say, John, you're John, saying, John Vinny, but, but make just, your point no, quickly. But sure. What he's saying, the yeah. NJEA didn't run any ads there. You're making it sound like well, the NJEA. Okay. Okay. Right, right, let me, general, excuse me, gentlemen, 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 let me yeah. jump, yeah. Let me yeah. jump yeah. in. The, uh, in the second legislative district in Atlanta County, uh, Chris Brown, Republican incumbent, held on to his seat yeah. despite what he said exactly. was $4 million worth of negative ads. We spoke to him briefly this morning. Here's what he had to say. My dog was uh, uh, growling at me now and again after the ads that they were running and the things they were saying. So people saw through it and, and they took that uh, belief in me and they cast her vote for me. And it really is humbling. Mr. Speaker, he said yeah. that the $4 million in outside money was spent in that district. Right. That's almost unprecedented in yeah. an assembly race. And almost all of it was on the Democratic side. And, and I got to tell you, I can't talk about the independent money. I can tell you what we had invested there in the hard money. But I got to tell you, he won. So what was the problem in 11? So it depends who your candidates are. And our candidates were candidates that knocked on doors that people said for years had not been there. And when you had the representatives in 11 that actually had sided with the governor and not funding women's health, that was something that resonated with the residents that had not been for property tax relief when we had suggested 20 percent 
cuts for property taxes and rebates. That had not been done. And listen, John, there it was a referendum that they did not want those representatives. And listen, the money could be spent any way you, you want. It's all about the candidates being elected. You know, I, I disagree fundamentally with the concept that money did not play a role. Chris Brown raised a lot more money himself than candidates in the other districts. So he had a lot more money to deal to, to use, so he at least was in the game and had some let ability you, to me, get let his Let me message. ask you a question. Yeah, sure. you, you, yeah. You're saying it was all about money. Not, not all about money. Was Chris Christie a factor in the outcome last night? To, to, in the mix, was there an anti-Christie vibe in the state that translated I, into some of these I changes think that of seats? The strong reform agenda that Chris Christie had from the time he came in to try to make this state more affordable uh, there was a reaction by public unions, I think, that was against that reform agenda, that we joined with him in trying to make some changes in this state that would make it more affordable for people to live here. So he plays a role in that. He was willing to stand up, be a strong leader. And when you're a strong leader, there's strong reaction. And, the rea and some of that reaction was the special interest money not liking yeah. that policy or John, our policy as Republicans. John, I hate to yeah. tell you, it sounds like sour sure. grape. You're making oh, this all about money, and it's not, because I can tell it, you, in the 16, and we could talk yeah, about it all day. It's not all about money. Do you think Chris Christie played a role in the result last I, I night? I think this was the people of the state of New Jersey did not like in the direction that the state is going right now. And I tell you, it probably was something to do with the governor, but I would tell you it's more of a reflection of their representatives in those specific districts that they did not want yeah. them to represent but, but them. But gentlemen, as we move on from mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. night's elections, yeah. what's going to be done now with the Transportation Trust Fund? What's going to be done about yeah. high property tax? But, but let me, I, I want to make it clear you, that... You still, that, that, you still that, have to... We, John, and we have yeah. to move beyond Absolutely. this because it has to be about policy. And I've said from the last two years, I've been talking about transportation trust fund, that we need to invest in it. And that's the way we start getting out of this problem. That is going to run out of money. We need to invest in that so that creates jobs. That will, will create an economy and those people will buy goods and service. Not no trickle down, it's a bubble of economy. Well, that's 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 when I talk about policy and I talk about special interest money, that has nothing to do with my relationship, my personal relationship, my professional relationship with the speaker. We, we can work together on transportation trust fund. We can work on bipartisan reforms. So when you see this discussion, th this is about we have different opinions as to certain issues. But that has nothing to do yeah. with our goal as two elected officials to work together. And that's yeah. what I intend to do. But so don't think somehow because we're arguing about District 2 or District 16 that we well, can't work as a team. My, my, sure. my thing is, uh, how, how does what happened last night Winners, losers on, on whatever side. How does this benefit the people of New Jersey, the taxpayers? What's going to be done about these serious issues now? Well, so, the Asbury, solutions. The Asbury Park Press came out with a list of things that they thought should be done. Yeah. They had a petition. Most of my members signed it. We, 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 we have some reforms. We have 80 bills we'd like to get posted. And I think the Asbury Park Press did a pretty good job in I, highlighting some of those tax I, reforms. I, I, yeah. I got to tell you, I, I don't need to sign any pledge because I've been talking about doing the right thing. I had been talking about a gas tax when nobody wanted to talk about a gas tax because it's reality. It's the low-hanging fruit to do this. And as I told you, you need to spur our economy, and then we can get to all those other things. Absolutely, our property taxes are a problem. We need to work on education. There is a lot of underfunded schools. We need to figure out how we do this, but we this was a marathon getting in. We're not sprinting out of it. And what you said, what does this do for the people of New Jersey? It sends a message to the Republican Party that they need to work with us. When something comes for a veto override, they need to be there with us, because if they thought it was a good thing to begin with, it's a good thing when it comes back around again. Real quickly, the average person is thinking, you know something, I don't know if I can afford to stay in the state of New Jersey. So what we're trying to do, at least myself as one leader, is make it competitive with other states so people don't have to leave, that businesses can stay. And I believe in the long term, that's an important role that we play as legislators. Yeah. Okay, thank you both very much you. for being with us. John Bramnick, Speaker Priya. Thanks, Speaker. Thank you. Good to be here, man.